This is One on One. We are pleased to be joined by Dr. Harry Banchek, Director of the Pediatric Department, Holy Name Medical Center. Good to see you, Doctor. Pleasure to be here. Uh, with four kids from four to 22, that's nuts, right? That's a whole other story. I'm fascinated, not just me, everyone out there watching who has kids or thinks about kids, worried about kids. Um, one of the biggest issues that comes up with kids, vaccines. Jenny McCarthy talks a lot about this, but she isn't the only source. Sometimes she says, look, vaccines are bad, they're dangerous, they cause problems, you say? I say, look at the data, look at the reality of the situation, and I say vaccines have been shown to save more lives than they c cause any problems. So, what is the problem in terms of the, how people get information about vaccines and other issues related to how we're supposed to be taking care of our kids? Well, the internet, obviously, everyone gets to say what they want without any data to prove what they're saying is correct. That's number one. Plus, the generation that we're dealing with now is the first generation in the history of society that has not had to suffer from any of these diseases. So they can't see the benefit of preventing something that they've never had. You got to, you, here's the problem that I look at. You've got a, a, a mom or a dad or both who come in, they say, doctor, I, I just don't want to get my kid vaccinated. Because I, I've heard so many th horror stories, I don't want to do it, you say. Listen, I give them my opinion, and it's their child that they want to do, but I think they're acting foolish in the fact that as an older, as an older pediatrician who's been around the block a long time, mm -hmm. I've seen children die. You know, not everyone dies from these things. I have children, you know, we don't see those diseases anymore mm -hmm. because they're vaccinated. Mm -hmm. You know, as uh, a resident, as a younger doctor, the number one cause of death in children was homophilus influenza B, pneumococcal bacteremia, sepsis, epiglottitis. We don't see it anymore. So therefore, people are not afraid of it because they're vaccinated. Why'd you go into this uh, field of medicine? You have so many options. Truthfully? Yeah. It's the only one I liked. You know. What do you like about it? I like dealing with the living. I like dealing with kids going on their way up people going on their web, as opposed to other doctors deal with people going on their way down. But you know what's so fascinating to me about the whole thing of pediatricians, I told you that our kids have the same pediatrician, even our 22 year old, um, same pediatrician after all these years, he's been great, but the same one that the other kids have. And I'm thinking to myself, come on son, you're, you're 22, and you said to me right before we got on the air, what's the matter with you? He's known him his whole life. When's enough enough? Enough is enough when, it's, when you need some different help. I mean, in our system, the way we have it set up right now is if you go from a pediatrician, you usually wind up going to an internist. Your 22-year-old son doesn't need to have a cardiogram right. and his cholesterol check nine times. He needs someone who's more of an infectious disease and psychologist for them at that age. And that's where the pediatrician fits in. So look at, look at I'm curious about this. As a pediatrician, do you look at certain, are you looking for certain things, looking at certain things at certain periods of time? Because uh, say from birth to five, five to 10, do you have those periods where you say, hey, certain points in time, we're looking for certain things, we're aware of certain things? Um, in the earlier children, where the younger age, obviously in infants, you're looking for their developmental milestones, both motor and social. And then, you know, in our world at five, you're worried about their academic performance in school and their social interactions. And then as they get to become adolescents, you're worried about their social interactions and their extracurricular activities out of school, you know, drug use, smoking, and now, uh, you know, obesity. There are many things, you know, pediatricians actually serve multi-purposes. We're not medical doctors only. We become psychologists. Is that true? Yeah. On that issue, do you think, and I've often thought about this, do you think that pediatricians are expected to be and do too much? You know, when people are, call me too much, yes, but no, I think we are. No, no, seriously, you know, that you're expected, you just said that, but you're not trained as a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Well, well I'm not, I don't practice psychiatry and I don't practice psychology, but part of what I do is I deal with children with emotional issues, parents who have emotional issues because of and with their children. So I 
do have some psychology. I'm not trained in it, but I've done it for 32 years. You can't ignore it. It's a very large because part of Because doesn't that impact the clinical issues, the medical issues that deal with one's body? Absolutely. And so much of what we see now is anxiety. Talk about that. Um, I've seen in my 32 years a tremendous rise of anxiety in children. Anxiety in children? Yes. Over what? Over things that they have seen that they don't quite understand, pressure put on them, the increase in the use of social media which tells you about a beheading in another country. These things have led, in my opinion, anxiety to be a very important situation that I deal with all the time. You know, I, it's... I, I hesitate to do this and my producers don't hesitate to say shut up and don't talk about it. Our young daughter this morning literally said, Daddy, she saw something about a bad guy on, on the news. I didn't realize she saw it. And she said to me, Daddy, that bad guy, and I knew who she was talking about and I knew what she was talking about. She said, Daddy, that bad guy wasn't a real bad guy. That bad guy was just in a cartoon, right? Or on a TV show. And it wasn't. It was a real bad guy. And it was a real bad situation. And I'm sitting there going, she's four years old. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Yeah. I think that there is. You can't just blow that off and go, oh, come on, Olivia. Right. Stick. And then when that child, in a very short time, may all of a sudden, at one time, at one moment, all of a sudden be fearful of something. You don't really know what it was. Something shook that child. But if, you make, if we talk about it too much, aren't you drawing too much attention to it? Well, we're not drawing the attention to it. We're she just did. trying to find out why this child is anxious all of a sudden. But we can't just ignore those things. Absolutely not. You don't have to rush them to psychiatrists and medicate them. Right. And, but you have to address it and try and teach them how to deal with their fears. Because there's so much more to worry about now. Is it fair to say that sometimes you get kids to talk about things that parents sometimes have a hard time getting their kids to talk about? Uh, they will sometimes open up to me. I can't, I, I'm not really sure. I think they just, they don't even know what they're afraid of sometimes either. Well, just being in this world and, and being exposed to things, and the internet does, social media does have an impact. It has a tremendous impact on the way parents deal with their children, worrying about vaccines, worrying about things, and children seeing things that they shouldn't be seeing. Yeah, the beheading thing is something. They've always been around. The ISIS beheading thing, boy, you see it come on and you're not, you don't move fast enough and the kid asks, what's that about? What's that all what, about? Give me that conversation. It's all another subject. Dr. Harry Banchek, who is Director of Pediatric Department at Holy Name Medical Center, I want to thank you for joining us and, and more importantly for all the kids that you've been helping for a long time and will continue to. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Stay right there. One on one will continue right after this. Thank you, doctor. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by TD Bank, Bergen Community College, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, New Jersey Natural Gas, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.